This is John Knight from the University Skills Academy. Today we're going to learn about the Feynman learning techniques. And a word of warning, in some of these slides I may disappear for a moment. I promise I will be back. I will not be missing in action for long. Richard Feynman was a Nobel Prize winning 20th century physicist. Yes, he was part of what became the Manhattan Project. If you want to learn more about him, by all means do so, but don't do it at the expense of your actual examinable course content. It may make up part of your sharpening of the saw routine if it interests you. And he is famous for saying many things, some of which you'll see in the outtakes. However, what we're here to discuss today is that he had a learning technique that broke down even the most complex of concepts into simple language and analogy. And he said that if he could break down anything to simplest subcomponents, he could learn anything and apply that knowledge and come up with the same conclusions as would subject matter experts in that particular field. This is often said of Richard Feynman to explain how bright he was and how, in, how super intelligent he was However, anybody can use that technique to learn new material, and that includes you. Write down the concept that you want to learn on a blank piece of paper. If you wish, when completed, transfer this sheet to a Cornell note page. Pretend you're teaching the idea to someone who has never heard of it before. That is, teach yourself. This is critical because two things will happen. You will reinforce the ideas you already know and then break down the concepts that you don't know perfectly well into their subcomponents. This helps you gain a better understanding and helps you to pinpoint the parts that you don't fully understand at this stage as well as you need to. If at any point you can't continue, refer to your lecture notes or your reference material and then reread or relearn that material and continue with the lesson plan. Lastly, where your explanations become wordy or complex, use the simplest possible language, in my case English, if in your case another language for your mother tongue, and simplify the explanation as far as your use of language will reasonably allow. In addition, use analogies where this helps and support these analogies with examples. It can be used to explain both micro and macro concepts. Take the water cycle for example. It can be used to explain the oscillation of the dipolar water molecule and it can be used to explain the entirety of the water cycle. In another area, for example, global positioning systems, it can be used to explain triangulation as a macro process or macro concept and in the minutiae it can be used to explain the differences between hydrogen and hydrogen as a propulsion gas or iridium clocks as opposed to casium clocks for timekeeping systems within that global positioning system. Applications. This is brilliant for technical sciences, maths, physics, IT. It's also very good for non-technical areas such as languages or marketing and pinpoint exactly what you don't understand and then figure out those missing pieces. As an aid to memory you can work through the idea and build a better analogy or simplify the words you use in the explanation so you can understand these ideas even more vividly. Finally, it can be used as test preparation. Use this technique without looking at your reference material. This is a quality self-test, and if you complete it successfully, it's a fair indication that you understand the idea at a deep level. The whole concept from beginning to end shouldn't take much more than about 15 minutes, or the area you're attempting to explain is too big. Break it down, cut it in half maybe. I'm gonna show you an example of the empirical rule from statistics. The rule states that for a normally distributed sample of data, 68% of the observations will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the observations will fall within two standard deviations of the mean, plus or minus two standard mean. 99.7% of the observations will fall within plus and minus standard deviations from the mean. This is best considered in a graphical format. And that's not a really good diagram. Let's expand that diagram so you can see it better. That's a reasonable picture, but let's add color. Okay. 68% falls within the yellow. This is plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. 95% falls within the yellow and the blue. That's plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. 99.7% of the observations fall within the combination of the green, blue, and yellow, plus or minus. 
three standard deviations of the mean. The remaining 0.3% falls within the pink or 1.5% at the extreme outliers from the mean. All sorts of implications follow from this rule, but I'm not here to expand on that in any great detail. What we're here to talk about is the Feynman technique and how you can apply it to pretty much anything. To confirm, everything I've just said is meant to clarify as plus and minus each standard deviation, not plus or minus. Now let me show you what my Cornell note-taking sheet looks like for this concept, at least when it's partially complete. Clearly the subject area and the dates. The page reference. Any abbreviations. A first formula. The alternate formula. A definition. An alternate formula for when this first formula doesn't work. A complete set of formulas and dependencies, etc. Applications. So you can use this in economics, finance, human biology, agricultural science. Single populations, multiple populations. Here's the diagram and here's the summary sheet. I've tried to match the colours in the diagram with the words in the summary sheet. We have, in the yellow, 68% of the observations fall within plus and minus one standard deviation of the mean. We have 95% of observations falling within plus and minus two standard deviations of the mean. We have 99.7% of the observations falling within plus and minus three standard deviations of the mean, and the remaining point. 3% of the observations fall within plus and minus 4 standard deviations of the mean. Based on this information, it is then possible to make statements such as the following, that based on empirical evidence, it may be possible to make accurate statements such as the tallest juveniles, that is the third standard deviation to the right of the mean, are as tall as the shortest sub-adults, the third standard deviation to the left of the mean, and the tallest sub-adults are as tall as the shortest adults, where these populations, one, overlap, two, are found to be normally distributed. Now let's have a look at that in another diagram. So this is what this last statement looks like. You've got a group of juveniles at the far left, and the tallest juveniles overlap with the shortest sub-adults. You've got the sub-adults in the middle and the tallest sub-adults overlap with the shortest adults, with the adults being far right. In summary, this can be used to learn new things that are standalone ideas or smaller components of larger concepts. Break anything down that you already understand. These notes you've seen today have been typed up only to offer you a better learning experience. You should really handwrite them. And remember, when you're handwriting them, read out loud so you're employing more senses than you may otherwise do. The Feynman learning technique allows you to clarify existing knowledge and allows you to learn new things and it can be used for memory work as well as exam preparation. This has been John Knight from the University Skills Academy. I thank you for your time and your trouble and you will see me in the next session. Richard Feynman, 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 supposedly his last words were, I'd hate to die twice, it's so boring. Other infamous quotes include, I would never accept any position in which someone has invited me a happy situation for where I do not teach. Never. So he was determined to teach. And last but not least for today, physics is like sex. Sure, it may have some practical results. But that's not why we do it.